Hello and welcome to Sam's Stories. Today I'm going to be reading Horrid Henry's Invasion by Francesca Simon. Ba, ba, ba. Perfect Peter barred happily at his sheep collection. There they were, his ten lovely little sheepies, all beautifully lined up from biggest to smallest, heads facing forward, fluffy tails against the wall, all five centimetres apart from one another. All, perfect Peter gasped. Something was wrong. Something was terribly wrong. But what? What? Perfect Peter scanned the mantelpiece. Then he saw. No! Fluff Puff, his favourite sheep, the one with the pink and yellow nose, was facing the wrong way round. His nose was shoved against the wall, his tail was facing forward, and he was... He was... Crooked! This could only mean... This could only mean... Mum! screamed Peter. Mum! Henry's been in my room again! Henry! shouted Mum. Keep out of Peter's room! I'm not in Peter's room, yelled horrid Henry. I'm in mine. But he was, wailed Peter. Wasn't, bellowed horrid Henry. (laughs) Horrid Henry was strictly forbidden to go into Peter's bedroom without Peter's permission. Well, sometimes, thought horrid Henry, when Peter was being even more of a toady toad than usual, he had no choice but to invade. Peter had run blabbing to Mum that Henry had watched Mutant Max and Night Fight when Mum had said he could only watch one or the other. Henry had been banned from watching TV all day. Peter was such a telltale frog face, ninny hammer, toady poo bag, thought horrid Henry grimly. Well, just wait till Peter tried to colour in his new picture hid. Mum! screamed Peter. Henry switched the caps on my coloured pens. I just put pink in the sky. Didn't, yelled Henry. Did, wailed Peter. Prove it, said horrid Henry, smirking. Mum came upstairs. Quickly, Henry jumped over the mess covering the floor of his room, flopped on his bed and grabbed a Screaming Demon comic. Peter came and stood in the doorway. Henry's being horrid, snivelled Peter. Henry, have you been in Peter's room? said Mum. Henry sighed loudly. (sighs) Of course I've been in his smelly room. I live here, don't I? I mean, when he wasn't there, said Mum. No, said horrid Henry. This wasn't a lie, because even if Peter wasn't there, his horrible stinky smell was. He has to, said Peter. Fluff Puff was turned the wrong way round. Maybe he was just trying to escape from your pongy pants, said Henry. I would. Mum, said Peter. Henry, don't be horrid. Leave your brother alone. I am leaving him alone, said horrid Henry. Why can't he leave me alone and get out of my room, Peter? He shrieked as Peter put his foot just inside Henry's door. Peter quickly withdrew his foot. Henry glared at Peter. Peter glared at Henry. Mum sighed. (sighs) The next one who goes into the other's room without permission will be banned from the computer for a week and no pocket money either. She turned to go. Henry stuck out his tongue at Peter. Telltale, he mouthed. Mum! screamed Peter. Perfect Peter stalked back to his bedroom. How dare Henry sneak in and mess up his sheep? What a mean, horrible brother. Perhaps he needed to calm down and listen to a little music. The Daffy and her Dancing Daisy's greatest hit CD always cheered him up. Dance and prance, prance and dance. You say moo moo, we say ba. Everybody says moo moo, ba ba, piped Peter as he put on the Daffy CD. Boils on your fat face, boils make you dumb. Chop, 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 I'm off, stick I'm on your bum, blared the CD player. Huh? What was that horrible song? Peter yanked out the CD. It was the school bangers singing the horrible Boney Boyle song. 
Henry must have sneaked a school banger CD inside the Daffy case. How dare he? How dare he? Peter would storm straight downstairs and tell Mum. Henry would get into big trouble. Big, big trouble. Then Peter paused. There was the teeny tiny possibility that Peter had mixed them up by mistake. No. He needed absolute proof of Henry's horridness. He'd do his homework, then have a good look around Henry's room to see if his Daffy CD was hidden there. Peter glanced at his to-do list, pinned on his notice board. When he'd written it out this morning, it read, Peter's to-do list. Practice cello, fold clothes and put away, do homework, brush my teeth, read Bunny's big boo-boo. The list now read, Peter's to-do list. Practice belly dancing, unfold clothes and throw away, don't do homework, flush my teeth down the toilet, read Bunny's big poo poo. At the bottom, someone had added, pick my nose, pinch mum, give Henry all my money. Well, here was proof he was going to go straight down and tell on Henry. Mum, Henry's been in my room again. He scribbled all over my to-do list. Henry, screamed Mum, I am sick and tired of this. Keep out of your brother's bedroom. This is your last warning. No playing on the computer for a week. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Horrid Henry slipped inside the enemy's bedroom. He'd pay Peter back for getting him banned from the computer. There was Peter's cello. Ha! It was the work of a moment to unwind all the strings. Now... What else? What else? He could switch around Peter's pants and socks drawers. No, even better. Quickly, Henry undid all of Peter's socks and mismatched them. Who said socks should match? Tee <laughs> Peter would go mad when he found he was wearing one Sammy the Snail sock with one Daffy sock. Then Henry snatched bunnykins off Peter's bed and crept out. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Perfect Peter crept down the hall and stood outside Henry's bedroom, holding a muddy twig. His heart was pounding. Peter knew he was strictly forbidden to go into Henry's room without permission. But Henry kept breaking that rule, so why shouldn't he? Squaring his shoulders, Peter tiptoed in. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Henry's room was a pigsty, thought Perfect Peter, wading through broken nights, crumpled sweet wrappers, Dirty clothes, ripped comics and muddy shoes. Mr Kill. He'd steal Mr Kill. Ha! Serve Henry right. And he'd put the muddy twig in Henry's bed. Serve him double right. Perfect Peter grabbed Mr Kill, shoved the twig in Henry's bed and nipped back to his room. And screamed. Fluff Puff wasn't just turned the wrong way. He was gone. Henry must have stolen him. And Lamikins was gone too. And squish. Peter only had seven sheep left. And where was his bunnykins? He wasn't on the bed where he belonged. No, this was the last straw. This was war. The coast was clear. Peter always took ages having his bath. Horrid Henry slipped into the worm's room. He'd pay Peter back for stealing Mr Kill. There he was shoved at the top of Peter's wardrobe, where Peter always hid things he didn't want Henry to find. Well, ha ha ha, thought Horrid Henry, rescuing Mr Kill. Now, what to do? What to do? Horrid Henry scooped up all of Peter's remaining sheep and shoved them inside Peter's pillowcase. What else? Henry glanced round Peter's immaculate room. He could mess it up. Nah, thought Henry. Peter loved tidying. He could... Aha! Peter had pinned drawings all over the wall above his bed. Henry surveyed them. Shame, thought Henry, that Peter's pictures were all so dull. I mean, really, my family and my bunnykins. Horrid Henry climbed on Peter's bed to reach the drawings. Poor Peter, thought Horrid Henry. What a terrible artist he was. No wonder he was such a smelly toad if he had to look at such awful pictures all the time. Perhaps Henry could improve them. Now, let's see, thought Horrid Henry, getting out some crayons. Drawing a crown on my head would be a big improvement. There, that livens things up. And a big red nose on Peter would help too, 
thought Henry, drawing away. So would a droopy moustache on Mum. And as for that stupid picture of Bunnikins, well, why not draw a lovely toilet for him too? What are you doing in here? came a little voice. Horrid Henry turned. There was Peter in his bunny pyjamas glaring at him. Uh-oh, if Peter told on him again, Henry would be in big, big, mega, big trouble. Mum would probably ban him from the computer forever. You're in my room. I'm telling on you, shrieked Peter. Shh, hissed Horrid Henry. What do you mean, shh, said Peter. I'm going straight down to tell Mum. One word and you're dead, worm, said Horrid Henry. Quick, close the door. Perfect Peter looked behind him. Why? Just do it, worm, hissed Henry. Perfect Peter shut the door. What are you doing? he demanded. Dusting for fingerprints, said Horrid Henry smoothly. Fingerprints? What? said Peter. I thought I heard someone in your room and ran in to check that you were okay. Just look what I found, said Horrid Henry dramatically, pointing to Peter's now empty mantelpiece. Peter let out a squeal. My sheepies, wailed Peter. I think there's a burglar in the house, whispered Horrid Henry urgently. And I think he's hiding in your room. Peter gulped. A burglar in his room. A burglar? Too right, said Henry. Who do you think stole Bunnikins and all your sheep? You, said Peter. Horrid Henry snorted. No, what would I want with your stupid sheep? But a sheep rustler would love them. Perfect Peter hesitated. Could Henry be telling the truth? Could a burglar really have stolen his sheep? I think he's hiding under your bed, his torrid Henry. Why don't you check? Perfect Peter stepped back. No, said Peter. I'm scared. Then get out of here as quick as you can, whispered Henry. I'll check. Thank you, Henry, said Peter. Perfect Peter crept into the hallway, then he stopped. Something wasn't right. Something was a little bit wrong. Perfect Peter marched back into his bedroom. Henry was by the door. I think the burglar is hiding in your wardrobe. I'll get... You said you were fingerprinting, said Peter suspiciously. With what? My fingers, said Horrid Henry. Why do you think it's called fingerprinting? Then Peter caught sight of his drawings. You've ruined my pictures, shrieked Peter. It wasn't me. It must have been the burglar, said Horrid Henry. You're trying to trick me, said Peter. I'm telling. Time for plan B. I'm only in here because you were in my room, said Henry. Wasn't. Were. Liar. Liar. You stole Bunnykins. You stole Mr. Kill. Thief. Thief. I'm telling on you. I'm telling on you. Henry and Peter glared at each other. Okay, said Horrid Henry. I won't invade your room if you won't invade mine. Okay, said Perfect Peter. He'd agreed to anything to get Henry to leave his sheep alone. Horrid Henry smirked. He couldn't wait until tomorrow when Peter tried to pay his cello. Hehe, <laughs> wouldn't he get a shock? Thank you for listening and please subscribe.